When you hear about opioid overdoses, you probably don't realize half of the nation's overdoses happen in the exact same spot. It's happening right at home. Georgians are accidentally dying in their own homes because people don't understand the dangers of taking an Oxy or Perk for sleep, stress, or with a glass of alcohol. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. This message is brought to you by Georgia DBHDD. One FM Noonan, WBRQ, LaGrange, WZV, 90.5 FM, Lionville, JC Sports Networks. Hello, this is co-pastor Patricia McFallen from Applying the Word Ministry. I would like to invite you to tune in to the Sunday School Teacher each Sunday morning at 8 a.m. on this station, WQEE. We will review the weekly lesson, so tune in, I said, Sunday morning at 8 a.m. For the Sunday School Teacher, I'll be waiting for you. Hello, this is Pastor Arthur James McFarlane inviting you to listen to Applying the Word Ministry radio broadcast every Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. right here on WQEE 99.1 on your FM dial. Listen in. Let's have church. Hey, I'm Jimmy Ellison. I'm the pastor here at Noonan City Church. I want to thank you for tuning in to our website and hope that you'll take the time to look throughout the website, all the different activities that are going on in the life of our church. Our purpose statement here at Noonan City is transforming lives for Jesus' sake. And we believe that takes place in three separate pillars. The first one is corporate worship. And we come together each Sunday for our worship services where our focus is on glorifying God. That is the, the purpose, the focus of our of our um, worship services each Sunday. The second pillar is local missions. And we believe that church is not to be contained inside the walls of a building, but rather outside those walls. And we look for opportunities and we have different partners in the community where we partner with other kingdom-minded ministries that are doing kingdom work and so encouraging our individuals here at the church to be the hands and feet of jesus outside the walls of our congregation so that's the second pillar and the third pillar is our community groups our small groups where we meet in homes throughout the community here in noonan and the focus of these groups is, is simply Bible studies, sitting in the circle, opening up the scriptures, and asking the Holy Spirit to speak to us and through us as we study God's Word. So those are the three pillars. And we believe when you do those three things that there's a transformation that takes place in your life. And that will transform your own family and transform our community and thus making a difference for the sake of Jesus. Again, thanks for tuning in. I hope to see you Sunday. Hank Arnold here from Cowie to Force. Cowie to Force is Noonan's own addiction recovery support center. We exist to provide recovery support services for individuals and family members who have been impacted by addiction. Our services are no cost, and all of our information is available on our website at www.cowitaforce.org or follow us on Facebook. I am Apostle Deborah Harris. Apostle of Kingdom Connected Ministries International at 121 Hillwood Circle, Noonan, Georgia. Presenting Connecting the Kingdom. Connecting Kingdom citizens, Kingdom businesses, and advancing the Kingdom of God in this hour. Join us each Tuesday at 10 o'clock a.m. with guests who are sharing their faith, business, and ministry. At Kingdom Connected Ministries International, uh, here where my husband and I are lead pastors, and we are in the studio today. We were out on last week, but I'm in the studio on today to share with you what God 
has been impressing upon my heart and what he has been dealing with me about. And that is the church. Now, listen. Very needful topic, but it is a, it is a topic that I want to try and bring some understanding for our benefit, for the body of Christ, for those of us who still need the understanding that we must get back to the household of God. We must get back to the ecclesia. Now, let me make two differences here to start with. First of all, the church that I really want to talk about is going to be the ecclesia. That's going to be the gathering of the believers. The gathering of the believers. Now, I am not talking about the individual church, which would be the believer in Christ Jesus. We are all considered the church, the individual believer. Those of us that have truly received Christ in our lives, we are considered the church. That's not what I want to emphasize today. What I really want to talk about is the coming together, the ecclesia, the, the household of God. That's what I want to talk about. Now, we need to understand that God, first of all, has not done away with the church. I am not understanding why people feel like that all of a sudden that God does not want us. He does not uh, instruct us. And he's not leading us to be a part of a local assembly. The ecclesia. To have that thinking, something is wrong. Something is wrong. So we shouldn't have that thinking after we have all of this New Testament teaching. Okay? Now, let me go back and let me also say that when Jesus did his earthly ministry for three years, Jesus did his earthly ministry. No, he did not talk about the church. He did not talk about the church. Jesus talked about the kingdom. Now, does that do away with the church? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. We just need to understand the difference. We need to understand the difference. And we need to understand um, why Jesus didn't talk about the church. And I'm going to give you a simple answer. Listen, we can dig deeper and we can, we can come up with some other answers. But let me give you a simple answer as to why Jesus didn't talk about the church. And that is going to be because the kingdom of God is greater than the church. Jesus didn't have to talk about the church. Because he knew that when he ascended back to the Father, that he had taught his disciples enough. That the church would be born. So there we go. At the day of Pentecost in Acts the second chapter. The church was born. After they were on one accord. And after they were filled with the Holy Ghost. The church was born. So now here we, here we have the church. We, we have the church. We have a gathering together of believers in a local assembly. Yes, they had house churches back in that day. N nothing different. Okay? But they gathered together and they uh, worshiped God. They were empowered.
empowered by the Spirit of God. They were given to giving and sharing and helping the community. So all of a sudden, we've gotten away from that. That, my friend, is a trick of the enemy. Don't take my word for it. If you pray to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Elohim, Adonai, if you pray to Him, He will reveal to you truly that you need to be back in the house of God. Now, is important in this hour. We have to understand, guys, that we are in the last hour of this age. I'm not altogether sure what you all are seeing. I'm not altogether sure what you're understanding. But here's the deal. There is so much going on that we, if we tried to comprehend it all, it would wear us out. But God will allow us to see enough to know that the time is at hand. So it is. While we're over here uh, complaining about not being in church as opposed to being in church, in the world, in other places, they are introducing the Antichrist. They're, they're bringing out all phases of the Antichrist. You have got to open your eyes and you have to understand that we are at the end. There's no more time to play church. That's where I'm headed now that I've gotten uh, the table set. I'm headed now to say to you, there's no more time to play church. Now, what we also need to understand is what did the Apostle Paul say to Timothy? What did he say to Timothy? The Apostle Paul was very uh, firm and very careful to share with Timothy, his son in the ministry, about how he needed to deal in the church in this hour. Okay? He was very, very careful to share with Timothy and to say to Timothy, this is what needs to be happening. And why am I even talking about Timothy? Let me tell you. Because if we're going to come back to the church, and if we are going to herd people into the church, we've got to have leaders that are willing to live a holy, godly life to lead the people. To teach the people, to train the people, and most of all, to be a godly example for the people. And this is one of the reasons why we're in the predicament we're in anyway. Other than, other than 2020 COVID. COVID, let me say this up front, COVID pulled a lot of people out of the church. That was a plan and an attack of the enemy. He wanted the church to be shut down. And we know without calling names, one of our governors tried his very best to keep the church, church shut down completely. But the man of God and the women of God said, no, we will continue with what God has called us to do. Okay. So we're out of 2020. 2020 has passed. But we still have people that are not desiring to go back to the house of God because we do not have godly leaders.
leaders that are leading the people by precept and example. Come on now. We cannot live like a sinner and preach like a saint. Those two don't mix. That's like oil and water. Um, some of you may be even wondering, okay, so why are we even talking about it? Because it's necessary. It is needful. The time that we have is running out. Here we go. Is running out. The hourglass has been positioned and our time is running out. We don't have time to pretend to be a godly leader and live like the world and we are confusing people. Now, let me say this before I get to this scripture. It is very, very important that we understand that God calls, He qualifies, He ordains men and women of God to the office of pastor, teacher, evangelist, prophet, and apostle. God calls these people to those places. So if God called you, He has already qualified you. If God called you, He already knew that you were equipped to stand in that office with Him. Yes, 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 yes. If God called us, He already knew that we have been empowered with the Holy Ghost. So then the question has to be, why are we in sin? Why are we practicing sin? Because God didn't call us. God is not our Father. You don't practice sin and stand in the office of the fivefold ministry gifts. When you stand in that office, you stand holy. Consecrated, sanctified. Those are not bad words. Those are good words. Those are words that should be resonating with our spirit and with our countenance and with our character. Okay? So if God calls you, then that means you shouldn't be practicing any singing. It's as simple as that. If God called you, uh, if you slip and fall into sin, you do not continue in sin. You repent, you get restored, and you go back to doing what God has called you to do. And so here's the deal, guys. I am by no means um, fooled or being misled as so many are because we have a title a title does not say God called you your character your behavior says that God calls you your title doesn't so titles don't confuse me titles do not say to me that this is a man of God. This is a woman of God. No. Titles don't fool me. We cannot be misled by a title, but we can be led rightly by our behavior and our character. And it's going to be godly. Because here's the deal. Let me read this scripture. Because I know y'all saying that I'm just doing a lot of talking here, but that's okay. But thou, O man of God, this is 1 Timothy 6, verses 11 through 12. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness. My God, Timothy, Paul is laying this out for Timothy. 
And see, Timothy was a young pastor. He was a pastor over a large congregation at Ephesus. At Ephesus. And Timothy had a big job ahead of him, in front of him, and before him. Timothy also had to deal with a lot of false teachers, a lot of false pastors, apostles, evangelists, prophets, you name it. Timothy had to deal with that. And as in correcting what they had taught and how they had misled some of the people who were in the house of God. There you go. And it goes back to what I said earlier. If we're going to be in the house, we need godly leaders. We don't need false leaders. We don't need leaders that are not living up to the standard of righteousness. As Paul mentioned here, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Paul told Timothy, he said, look, O oh, man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and 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 has professed. That means that Timothy had professed. A good profession before many witnesses. I can imagine that before, that during his period of consecration and ordination to move into this office uh, to be the pastor of this church, there were many that looked on Timothy. And Timothy made a confession, but was it empty? Was the confession of faith empty? Was it empty? Because if it was empty, this is the reason why we are living the way we're living because of our empty confession of faith. And so guys, here's the deal. We must, we must, um, we must be those who are going to live a life unto godliness. We must be those who's going to live a life unto holiness, faith, perseverance, all of these things. So let me read something to you. Let me add something to let me add something to this. Let me share something with you. Because if we do not come back to a place of holiness in the body of Christ, more specifically with leaders, listen, we all understand that we mimic what we see and we mimic leadership. Uh, mimic is not the best word to use. But when we look at it from a worldly perspective, that's exactly what we do. That's exactly what we do. When we look at it from our home life, the parents, I mean, the children really do what the parents do. They live the life that they see their parents live. And all they're doing is mimicking their parents. Now, or following after their parents, it works the same way in the house of God. Now, and, and and this is gonna be a this is gonna be a power ball, but I'm finna roll it. <laughs> when you follow after ungodly leadership, it is a possibility that you yourself you're hiding behind that ungodly leadership because you want to live an ungodly life. So there you go. That's a power of all, but listen, it's real. It's real. Somebody has to tell the truth. Somebody has to speak the truth. And here's the deal. Apostles, when God called apostles, apostles 
are supposed to be true speakers. True, real apostles are truth speakers. They're going to speak the truth. And they're not supposed to compromise. We don't compromise with the world. We can't compromise with worldly living. We are supposed to toe the line. Now, are we perfect? Don't misunderstand me, guys. I am not saying that I'm perfect. But what I am saying is that I'm walking with God. I'm striving to live a holy, godly life. Do I have faults? I'm sure I do. You probably can name plenty. But my life is hidden in Christ. My life no longer exists. Um, it, 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 it no longer exists. I died with Christ when I accepted him. And when I accepted Christ, I came all the way in. That was my goal. That's my prayer. That's my hope. And that's my desire. I'm all the way in. I'm all the way in. My husband sings a song. Goodbye world. I stay no longer with you. And it goes on to say something, uh, something about, I've given up the pleasures of sin, and I no longer want that life. That's not, if you know the song, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But goodbye world. Listen, we have got to get away from that. Now, listen. Here we go. I thought this was good. Here, it says here, he gives four commands in verse 11 and 12 that are pillars for perseverance. First command, flee. Second command, pursue. Third command, fight. And fourth one is take hold. Take hold. <clears throat> so to persevere, a man of God, or even one of a God, woman of God, just just know that I'm talking about both. Will flee worldliness, pursue godliness, fight for the faith, and take hold of eternal life. That is what we have been called to do as men and women of God. The church, the ecclesia. The body of believers, if we're going to gather, we need godly leaders that are presenting themselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which would be our reasonable service. And we are to renew our minds so that we can be transformed and will no longer be conformed to the world and its pleasures. Because guys, here it is. Here it is right here. The only way to lead the church as a leader, talking about a leader, the only way to lead the church is to be led by the Holy Ghost. How can we be led by the Holy Ghost if we are in sin, how can we be led by the Holy Ghost? How can we be led by the Holy Ghost if we're living a life of sin, constantly practicing in sin? No mind change, no heart change. But, and, and, and I'm not talking about this heart that pumps, I understand all of that, but just for the sake of demonstration, our minds hadn't changed, and our hearts have not changed. So, we're living unto the world and not unto God. So, Holy Spirit cannot lead us. Holy Spirit is not telling us how we are supposed to deal with people. So, we are left to ourselves to deal with them the way we want to. 
And when we do that, anything goes. Anything goes. Anything goes. And that, my friend, should not be the case. We need the spirit feel leadership to take the church, to take the church in the direction that God would have us to go in the last hour. <coughs> this is we need. Godly, Holy Spirit filled leaders so that we can be the men and women of God gathering in the end times harvest. Now, we're in the last hour and there will gonna be an end time harvest or something because where would God send them? Why would God send the end time harvest into the houses that has Ichabod written on it? The presence and the glory of God has left the house. God can't send them there. And everybody can't fit in one place. So I understand that we need different houses of God. Everybody can fit in one place, but we need godly leadership that's willing to be led by God. That's willing to submit their life to God in prayer, in fasting, in reading and the studying of the Word of God. Now, let me say this, and I'm by, I am not saying that we're, uh, that I won't say, I really want to say that I'm not saying that leaders don't read their Bible. But can I really say that and be honest? No. Nah. Uh, here's the deal. We can't read our Bibles for a sermon. But we've got to read our Bibles for godly living. If we read our Bibles for godly living, God will give us a sermon. And why would he give us a sermon? Because first of all, when you go into the Word of God, I don't have my Bible in here with me, but I'm just going to pretend that this is my Bible. When you go into the Word of God, there's a change. There's a transformation that's going to take place. In that change, God will give you testimonies. God will increase your anointing. God will give you stories that will be a blessing to somebody else's life. When we go into the Word... Spirit filled. See, the word of God is spirit. With the word of God being spirit and you having the Holy Spirit living in you. Look, you're no uh, the devil is no match for you. And the people of God will be empowered and blessed. And most of all, they will be led correctly. Now, you can, argue, you, you can argue with anything that I'm saying. But if you want to deal with the truth, you know I'm right. So now, the Bible cannot be read for a sermon only. But it has to be read for godly living. This is what God, uh, Paul was telling Timothy. That he was to pursue godliness. How do you pursue godliness? The Bible. You don't pursue godliness by listening to our dear Oprah and all the rest of these people that we listen to. That's not how you pursue godliness. And listen, even for individual believers, we too should be in the Bible. But now, all this stuff about... I don't need to pastor. I can read my own Bible and I know how to live. Okay. I hear you. But is it correct? No. It's not correct. 
and you know, inbox me. We'll talk. Because the scriptures does not support that mentality. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to be honest with you. That mentality is straight from the pit of hell. I know that sounds rough, but it's truth. And let me tell you another thing. You have leadership all the way across the board. You have leadership in every aspect of your life. Have you ever asked the question why? Why is it that we have leaders everywhere? <clears throat> you know why? God knew we needed it. God knew that if we, if we were left to ourselves to do what we want to do, this world would have already dissolved and we probably, we probably would have already been consumed with fire. Because we would run amok and make a mess. We need leaders. You, you're supposed to have leaders in your home. Who's supposed to be the head leader? The husband. And listen, let me just go ahead and add. The reason our home's out of order, why? Because there are no dads. There are no husbands. Come on now, somebody ought to know what I'm talking about. And then, on the workplace, every last one of you have a supervisor, a manager, a boss. Why? Because you need to be kept in check. You can't go to no job and do what you want to do, right? You're going to do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. You can't do it. I don't know of any job. The only job that you can treat like that is your self-employment. And if you're going to make a go of the business, you have to become your own boss. And you have to tell yourself, this is what I'm going to do, and this is not what I'm going to do. There you go. You still have a leader. Uh, the government serves as leadership. <clears throat> and for those of you don't, that don't pay the government any attention, this is why you're going to get in trouble for cheating on your taxes. Eventually. It may not have caught up with you yet, but it's coming. The government lays out the laws of the land and they tell us what we can and cannot do. Now, I understand we are supposed to obey the government, except when it interferes with the word of God. That's when we separate following the government. But the government is leadership. But listen, here we go. When we come to the house of God, we don't want to follow leadership. And leaders don't want to be godly. You'll go to your job. We have, we have pastors, apostles, bishops, uh, who, elders that are, that are appointed by man. Listen, let me, let me interject that. The only appointments should be elders and bishops and deacons. Um... None of us have any business appointing anybody to be an apostle, evangelist, prophet, or a teacher. Okay? But now when we are called to those offices, then we have jobs too. We can't go to these jobs and about, I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm a, an apostle. I don't do what everybody else do. Guess what's going to happen? <laughs> You're going to get fired. We have to obey just like everybody else. But then we'll come to the house of God and then we won't even obey the Bible. The leaders won't obey the Bible. Uh, listen, he told Timothy, Timothy to flee from useful lust. Come on, y'all. Listen. I know this is hard. I know this ain't good. 
this, this, this is not what we want to hear. But this is what I have. Amen. This is what I have. Uh, we have to be those that are willing to live right for God. Um, here's what he said. Let me find it. If any man, well, I really will have to read all of this, but let me just try to read some of it. Anyway, if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof comment, envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men, of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supporting that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. And then he goes on to say, we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we will carry nothing out. And he then he, he says, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into food, many foolish and hurtful lusts, which draw men into destruction and perdition. And then this would he come in to warn Timothy about where he should go and how he should live. Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Now, was Paul speaking against having uh, wealth or having riches? Not really. But he was saying to Timothy, don't get caught up with that. He said, don't get caught up with that. And then he made it clear to him that if this is what you're after, then we need to change our minds. You need to change your mind. This is not what you need because you already have had false teachers teaching this, so let's teach something different. Now, and, 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 and Paul shared so much in 1 Timothy as well as 2 Timothy and talked about how Timothy was supposed to carry himself as a man of God. As a man of God. Not as a worldly man, but as a man of God. That's what he wanted Timothy to understand uh, and to not get caught up with worldly desires, worldly living, worldly activity. <clears throat> we can't be those who are living such a lifestyle and expect God, we expect God to do this for us. We, we can't do that. We've got to live the life that's going to bring holiness that's going to bring godliness. That's going to bring consecrated living. Consecrated living. Unto God. Now, if you read in the book of Timothy, first and second, you're going to find out that, that Paul gave Timothy sound doctrine and teaching about every aspect. <clears throat> Every aspect of his life, nothing left unturned. Nothing left. Uh, in in second, First Timothy chapter five, verse twenty-two, he tells him. He says, "Look, um, he's, he tells him. He says, don't lay hands.' No, he says. First of all, verse twenty. He says, them that sin rebuke before all that others may fear. But here's the deal, guys. The only reason I want to mention that is how can we rebuke people for sinning if we're in sin ourselves? This is why we need godly, holy living so that we can keep the people accountable. Once again, Timothy 
was being instructed on how to be a godly leader. How can we be such a one if we're going to practice sin? And he says, he even went on to say, he says, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. How can you, how can we do any of this when our life is not in line with God? We're going to show partiality. We're going to show favoritism. We're, we're going to do things that are not going to be in line with who God has called us to be. We, we, we can't do it. We have got to be those that are willing to live by the B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions before leaving this earth. Why? Because we know we're going to leave. And then the question has to be, where are we going to end up? Follow the instructions. Follow the uh, owner's manual for godly living. That's what we need to do. Follow this. And we're going to be better off for having done so. And better off for being in a posture and a position to lead other people. We cannot afford to do it any way, any other way. Now, uh, if we would just follow simple instructions, here we go. The Bible. Follow simple instructions. We're going to be better. We're going to live happier, joyful, peaceful lives. Am I right? In 1 Timothy, 1st chapter, listen, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God, our Savior, and our Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, he says unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. He says, As I besought thee to abide still in Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. And then he goes into all of these things that the false teachers were teaching, as I mentioned earlier. But he's going to charge Timothy to do what was needful and necessary. He says in verse 8, but we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. <clears throat> Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for the sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers, murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men sellers, liars, perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. So Paul tells Timothy, and I'm going to bring this so close, Paul tells Timothy that godly men and women <clears throat> should not be named among those things that I just named from 1 Timothy, the first chapter. And I think I started reading around a verse 8. He said, those things shouldn't be named among us. He said, the law is for the unrighteous. So Timothy, you being a righteous man of God, you can instruct them on holy living. 
And the only way you can instruct them on holy living is that you have to first practice these things yourself. You have to practice pursuing godliness, faith, love, <clears throat> and uh, persevering. You have to first pursue those things. Guys, we must get back to holiness. Starting with the leadership. Starting with the leadership. Listen. Our former pastor used to say to us, there's nothing worse than having to deal with someone who's operating out of their carnal nature. Out of their fleshly nature. That's, a, that's pretty much a person who has not gotten it right with God. And we've got to get it right with God. We need Godly leadership for the ecclesia, for the house of God. Godly leadership, godly leadership. We need it. We can no longer play church, guys. No longer can we play church. We don't have time in this hour to dress up and go to church. And lead the same. We no longer have time for that. This is where we need to be. We dress up. We want to look good. Yes. But we need to go to the house of God. Expecting to hear from God. If we don't hear from God. We have wasted our time. The only way you're going to hear from God. It's going to have to be that the leadership has first heard from God. I don't know any other way to put it. Listen, so much can be said here. So much can be taught here. But Timothy and the Apostle Paul, being Timothy's father in the faith, he gave Timothy everything he needed to know concerning leading that church of Ephesus. And men and women of God, we need to reread that book and make sure we understand how we are supposed to live as godly leaders. And most of all, operate from a place of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will teach you and lead you into godly living. What else can I say? So guys, listen. To sum up everything I said in about one or two sentences, we need godly leadership in the house of God for a godly living. There you go. And until next Friday, be blessed. Be safe and get to the house of God where the word of God is not only being taught but is being lived. <laughs> This is Margie from Connecting Hearts Network. I'd like... When you hear about opioid overdoses, you probably don't realize half of the nation's overdoses happen in the exact same spot. It's happening right at home. Georgians are accidentally dying in their own homes because people don't understand the dangers of taking an Oxy or Perk for sleep, stress, or with a glass of alcohol. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. This message is brought to you by Georgia DBHDD. Some people celebrate the holidays, but you, you dominate the holidays. You deck the halls, the 
mental, and anything else that will stand still. You deserve a bold cold brew that's as festive as you. Topped with creamy cookie butter cold foam, covered in cookie butter crumbles, and perfectly pairable with our new cookie butter donut, Dunkin's Cookie Butter Cold Brew is a delicious match for your decked out domination. America runs on Dunkin'. Present participation may vary. Limited time offer. Terms apply.